In previous videos, we've talked about hyperacute rejection and acute rejection of transplanted organs. Uh, let's now talk about chronic rejection. Um, so assuming that uh, acute rejection and hyperacute rejection haven't occurred, that would be great, um, then the organ hopefully will last a very long time. Although, uh, truthfully, most organs don't always last a very long time. Uh, about half of, or over half, of kidney and heart transplants um, fail after about 10 years due to chronic rejection. So the immune system eventually figures out that this donated organ is foreign or non-self and eventually generates antibodies that will slowly lead to the destruction of the organ. In the chronic rejection, we're going to see the indirect pathway of allorejection. This is in comparison to um, acute rejection, acute rejection, in which you have the direct pathway of allorejection. In the acute pathway, we saw um, T cells recognizing donor cells and activating and um, causing inflammation and tissue destruction. Here, we're going to see T cells as well activate, but it's going to be indirectly uh, activating against the HLAs that are mismatched on the donor cells. So. Again, let's talk about, for example, a kidney transplant, one of the most commonly donated organs. And here's the donor's uh, kidney. And in the donor's kidneys, we have donor kidney cells, as well as donor uh, dendritic cells. So the recipient has taken in the donor's kidney. And again, uh, we would love to get an identical matches between all the HLAs, but that's not going to happen unless we're talking about uh, identical twins donating from one to another. So even if we're talking about siblings or related individuals, um, the 100% HLA match uh, typically doesn't occur. So the donor is going to have some mismatched HLAs compared to the recipient. So this could lead to chronic rejection years later. How would that occur? So um, during the course of years of having this donated kidney, uh, cells in the kidney will die. They will be recycled. The dendritic cells will uh, travel from the kidney into lymph nodes, where they could also um, eventually uh, die. So there's some turnover in the cells that are present in the kidney. And these are the donor cells. So as donor cells slowly die over time, uh, just because they're getting replenished, um, what happens to dead cells? Well, many of them are phagocytosed by phagocytes in the body. And now we're looking at a lymph node. Here's a lymph node. It's in black. It's the recipient's lymph node with the recipient's dendritic cells. So what do dendritic cells and macrophages do in the lymph nodes? They phagocytose things, uh, dead things, dying things, pathogens. In this instance, they're going to phagocytose some of the dead or dying cells from the donor tissue. Normal process in the body. Cells die, and they get phagocytosed by phagocytes. But here, we're phagocytosing the donor's cells. And when that happens, um, those donor HLA molecules are going to get broken down. Things that get brought in via the uh, phagosome, fuse the lysosome, you've got the formation of the phagolysosome, and the breakdown of molecules in there. And then what do those molecules do? They get loaded onto MHC molecules. Now we're talking about MHC class two molecules because we're talking about taking things in via the extracellular pathway. And it is possible if there's enough mismatch between the donor and the recipient that the donor's HLA peptides will end up on the recipient's H, uh, MHC class two molecules. So again, those uh, what you're seeing there loaded on the MHC class two are peptides derived from the donor's HLA molecules. So if this occurs, it is possible that there would be a naive CD4 T cell wandering the body with a T cell receptor uh, with a variable region that has an antigen binding site that uh, it's not trained to ignore that peptide. That peptide is non-self because it is sufficiently different from the recipient's own proteins and peptides. If this is the case, then that CD4 helper T cell could recognize that, H that peptide as foreign, as non-self, and can uh, stimulate a immune response against it. It's a non it is, it's a non-self peptide, if it's a mismatched HLA. 
At the same time, you could also have a naive B cell with a B cell receptor with its antigen binding sites binding any of the mismatched foreign non-self HLA molecules. And if the B cell recognizes one of those and processes the uh, um, peptide via receptor mediated endocytosis and shows it to that T cell, that T cell says, "Yep, that peptide. Um, I don't rec uh, That peptide is foreign. It's non-self. I bind it strongly." we should unleash an attack against whatever originated that peptide. And so now what you have is the production of anti-HLA antibodies that recognize the donor's MHC molecules. This process might, is, might not happen very quickly after uh, tissue or organ donation. It, it, it more likely will take place over the course of years and years as some of the donor cells die, get taken up by the recipient's immune system, and if any of the recipient's immune cells, like the T cells and the B cells you see there, have B cell or T cell receptors that recognizes peptides from those HLAs, that is when you get the um, production of anti-HLA antibodies. So again, this process takes years to occur, but occurs in uh, the majority of organ transplants. So now that the recipient has generated anti-HLA antibodies, that will lead to um, slowly chronic rejection because these antibodies will cause uh, um, organ damage uh, to the donated, uh, donated organ. Um, the anti-HLA ant antibodies could bind to the surface of cells. They could bind to, um, if cells have died, um, bind to soluble fragments of the cell and therefore uh, cause the formation of immune complexes which deposit and collect in these blood vessels. So you have this slow level of uh, attack on the blood vessels if, if the donor's um, tissue due to um, these anti-HL antibodies slowly accumulating in these blood vessels attaching to the donor's HLAs and causing inflammation, tissue destruction, um, the tissue has to be repaired, it's damaged, it's repaired, and eventually the, the blood vessels' walls get thick because of the constant inflammation and tissue repair and tissue damage that occurs, and the organ ends up um, slowly dying due to a lack of oxygen getting from the bloodstream into the organs and tissues. So this is known as ischemia, um, when organs are, are deprived of oxygen. And in the case of chronic rejection, the slow buildup of anti-HLA antibodies leads to uh, blood vessel thickening, ischemia in the donated organ, and eventually organ death. So this covers the chronic uh, rejection of organs via the indirect pathway of allo recognition.